Definitely seen a difference already. Hello, beautiful. In this video, we're going to be comparing the original Laura Mercier powder versus the new Lori Mercier powder. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you have tried the original powder. If you have never tried the original powder, make sure to check out my review of the original powder. I'll leave a link down below or you can click the little bubble up top in the corner to watch it. So here is the new Laura Mercier translucent tone-up powder in rose. If I am pronouncing this word wrong, Please forgive me, even if I knew how to correctly pronounce it, I would still struggle. Just that last name is just really hard to pronounce. A popular trend on TikTok, it mentions applying a pink powder underneath the eyes to really just make it look flawless and super bright. Ideally, it's supposed to brighten up the under eye better than a regular translucent powder would. I've been wanting to try a pink powder to see if it will work on my complexion. So I'm going to use one powder on one side of my face and I'm going to use the newer powder on the other side of my face. And also I'm going to be doing a baking method technique from Huda Beauty. So you can really tell the difference between both powders and we could really just apply a whole bunch of powder and see the benefits of it. The new Tone Up Powder in Rose is mainly meant for fair to light skin tones. It instantly tones up the complexion with a perfectly balanced peachy pink shade and has the same benefits as the original powder. It has a balance of warm and cool tones that brighten up the skin without adding chalkiness. And that is definitely true. Laura Mercier powders, there's just no chalkiness. The original Laura Mercier translucent loose setting powder, however, is an Allure Award best winner and has three different shades. They have translucent, which is the one that I have. And then they also have it in the shade Honey. Um, which would be more ideal for like my complexion and then they also have medium deep for medium to deep skin tones That is basically the main difference of the newer version Everything else this powder does is pretty much identical to what the original powder does For example, both powders instantly blur and brighten the skin with a soft focus finish I'm assuming the newer version brightens it up just a little bit more. They both last and control shine for 16 hours with zero flashback. Both are finely milled, making them feel weightless without texture or chalkiness. It doesn't settle into fine lines. However, I gotta say, I feel like the newer tone up version is a little bit thicker than the original and the reason why i believe i think that is because when i'm pouring it out i find that i have to pour more out of the uh newer version like i had to shake it to get more product out compared to the laura mercier one and i don't know i feel like it feels just a tad bit thicker as well both of these powders should make the skin look and feel soft smooth and flawless from day Tonight. Both powders are for all skin types, especially oily to combination. It doesn't clog pores, it doesn't contain fragrance, and is dermatologist tested. Both of these powders contain vitamin C and E. Powders, which are powerful antioxidants to create a more even tone complexion over time. Botanical blurring powder, which blurs the look of pores and controls excess oil. And skin conditioning powder, which is a natural amino acid that helps to remove basically some of that chalky look. But only the tone up version contains peachy pink pigments, which in turn brightens up the complexion. And lastly, according to 63 consumers, 86% say it reduces shine throughout the day. 95% say that it controls oil all day. I don't know who those people are because it doesn't control my oil all day. And that's a pretty big number, 95%. 89% say it doesn't settle into lines or look cakey. I definitely agree with that. 84% say it is truly translucent. Honestly, it depends on the shade. 
that you pick up. For me, it kind of lightens me just a little bit. That's probably because I'm using translucent, which is more ideal for fair to light tones. You definitely want to stick with your shade if you want it to be truly translucent. 92% say it instantly blurs imperfections. 94% say it gives a smooth finish. My face has never felt smoother. And 91% say it applies effortlessly, which it does. We're gonna start with the original version first. And I'm gonna use a technique from Laura Mercier where she first applies the powder underneath her foundation and underneath her concealer, which I've never done before. On this side of my face, I'm gonna do that technique. And on this side, we're not going to do it just so that we could see the effects of it. Putting the powder underneath the foundation and underneath the concealer is supposed to kind of further help prevent oil throughout the day. So I want to see how powerful it will work. I would give it about three hours and then after that I definitely have to touch up. So 16 hours definitely is not true in my case. Doing it this way, I hope it'll work. So what I do is I just tap it into the cap like this. Then I'm gonna take this puff. Their puff, I believe, is the velour puff. I'm just using this clay de po puff, which kind of is the same thing. And I'm gonna dip some in here. And then in the instructions, it says to kind of fold it and then rub it together like this. If you have a lot, you can tap it on the back of your hand to remove excess. And we're just gonna go and apply it underneath our eyes. I'm gonna just apply this everywhere because I'm going to apply my foundation everywhere. Wow, this puff feels so nice. It kind of made my skin look nice. It definitely mattified it. Now for the fun part. I'm gonna go in with my Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. This is currently my favorite tinted moisturizer. I'm just gonna go in with my fingers because it is a tinted moisturizer. I'm gonna go ahead and apply it on the other side of my face, side that doesn't have anything on it apply a little bit more because I really want to test to see if this was going to control the shine all day long. Usually when I do like two layers of foundation, I tend to get really shiny and oily. Now I'm going to go in with concealer and at this point I'm kind of doing the baking method that Huda Beauty does and I'm going to follow along with a Huda Beauty baking tutorial because I really want to show you the full potential of both of these powders and I want to apply as much as possible so that we can really see the difference between both of them. So one of the first steps we're gonna do is take some concealer, just using the e.l.f. hydrating concealer. So this is everywhere where I'm going to be applying the powder. I'm gonna go heavy and bake in the under eye areas, my forehead and my chin. And then on the rest of my face, I'm going to tap just a little bit of powder like how I would normally do. I have here a wet beauty sponge. Most important thing is wait two minutes before you blend this out. And a really important thing is you want to make sure that you're using a hydrating concealer for this. Because if you're using a mattifying concealer, you cannot wait. You're going to have to blend it out right away. So definitely this is the side without the powder underneath, and this is the side with the powder underneath. I kind of like that. Only thing is underneath this eye, um, it does look a little drier and a little bit patchier than this side. Turn it over and do a few taps. It's gonna give you about that much product. Like I said, I'm gonna be using a lot of product for this baking method. And I'm just gonna get my beauty sponge saturated here in the little corner and just start baking. You don't want to blend it into the skin quite yet. And I'm going to put some up here. Don't be afraid to use a lot. You're not actually going to have all this powder underneath your eyes because the beauty sponge is going to soak up a lot of the powder. And if there isn't loose powder flowing all over the place, you are not doing it right. I'm now going in with the tone up side and I just flip it over and I do like one, two, three taps. And that should give me, that gave me a little bit less. That's definitely one thing I've noticed about the newer version is a lot less comes out. So it makes me 
think that it's less finely milled than the original version, but it says it's supposed to be even more finely milled, if not the same, but I don't know. I've done this about three times already and it, it always comes out like a lot less than the original version. Like I even tap three times, both times. And you don't have to wait too long like people normally do. I would say maybe like 30 seconds or even less than that. And we're just going to go ahead and just blend it in. We use this backside to blend in the edges. And oh my gosh. What's that noise? I am in love. I wish I could show the clip of when I first did this because I was blown away. I used to bake, I used to wait, I used to take a brush afterwards, brush it off. This just works perfectly. So as you can see, I really wanted to do this baking because I wanted you to really see the difference between both sides and we're definitely getting that here. I'm definitely seeing a difference already. I'm just gonna blend the sides. And again, like I said earlier, you don't have to worry about having too much powder there because the sponge just soaks it all up. It's, it's like my under eye area is brand new. <laughs> the side with the tone up is a little bit lighter, a little bit whiter, whereas the translucent original shade um, definitely has more of that natural look. I like both of them because I really love brightening up my under eye area. That's just something that I really enjoy. Obviously the translucent original shade is working a lot better for me. It looks a lot more natural. It depends on what you're looking for. Wow. I love that. I think the, the, the name tone up is the best way to describe this powder. Let me know if you could see a difference between both sides. I feel like it's, very subtle but i could still see it this side it feels like definitely a lot <laughs> a lot lighter whereas this side you could still see a little bit of my natural skin peeking through although it is making it my skin a little bit lighter if i want to keep a more natural appearance i definitely would just stick uh, with translucent shade another tip is that if you apply some um, of the powder over your eyes. It's going to make your eyeshadow look smoother and nicer. So I'm gonna do that. And then we're also gonna come back and see if this powder is truly going to keep me matte for all day. Head and did the rest of my makeup. I did the eyeshadow technique and I find that that always smooths out my eyeshadow. So regardless of what setting powder you use, it's always going to make it smoother. Laura Mercier translucent setting powders, both the Tone Up and the original, pretty much do what they claim to do. They really blur out the skin, they smoothen it out, they hide the pores. If you do this style of baking, it looks phenomenal in pictures, in videos, but just be aware, in person, it can definitely look like maybe a bit too much like you definitely went a little heavy-handed with the powder <laughs> but it's it still looks nice overall other loose setting powders that are similar to this one i would highly recommend the fenty beauty loose setting powder i got this in the shade banana if you are looking for say a variety of loose setting powder shades um, i would definitely check this one out because it's been a while since i've used this but i remember when i did use it I felt like it was a little bit better than the Laura Mercier Loose Setting Powder and that is saying a lot because the Laura Mercier Setting Powder has been a cult favorite for probably a decade now so to find a powder that can possibly be better is kind of hard to believe but it also has better packaging in my opinion. Looks really nice. If you're just focusing on the under eyes, there's also the Pat McGrath Labs Under Eye Setting Powder. This is in the shade yellow i guess and this one it comes in a compact form so it's not a loose setting powder but this one also looks really great to set the under eyes are basically just set anywhere that you highlighted if you want a guaranteed way to kind of control your oils a little bit longer throughout the day 
I highly recommend this Rimmel London. This is the Rimmel London Stay Matte Powder. This is like my third repurchase of this powder. It's super affordable and it works. It used to be even more affordable when I bought it years ago, but it works. It keeps you shine and oil free for many, many hours. I've yet to find a powder that literally keeps me matte and dry for the entire day, especially when it comes to loose powders. But with this one, I feel like it's one of the best for controlling shine and keeping you matte throughout the day. It doesn't keep you matte all day, but it does it for a very long time. And again, it's in a compact form, so you could just easily put it into your bag. Another thing I've noticed, in case if you are interested, I feel like if you are interested in keeping your face dry, my experience, my personal experience, is that I find that when I, the more expensive a powder is, I feel that they are not really there to keep me dry and oil free. I feel like they're more mm, designed to look nice on the skin. For example, I have the Gucci powder right here. I still put it in my bag when I'm traveling, but I find that if I do apply it on my face, it feels like 30 minutes to an hour later, I have to go in and powder again. I don't know why that is, but I just feel like the higher end compact powders are loose setting powders. I feel like they're more catered to just making your appearance look nicer as opposed to keeping you dry throughout the day. Should you pick up both of them? Um, should you pick up one or the other? Honestly, I think it really comes down to personal preference. If you are my skin tone or lighter, I definitely think you can get away with either one. I would definitely stick with the original formula if you are looking for a more natural look. If you're looking to kind of get a little bit more glam, then go for the pink one. In my opinion, I really like that I have both of them. I don't regret picking this one up, but I think in the future, I will just stick with the banana shade versus the pink shade because it is just a little bit to light basically the difference would be is that this one um, is going to make you look a little bit brighter this powder really meets all of its claims if you already have the original translucent powder you definitely don't have to pick this one up but if again you're really into that whole brightening effect then go for it it also comes in a pink top which is really cute. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button. This will help others discover this video and hopefully find a helpful product. Make sure to subscribe to this channel to stay updated with newly released makeup reviews. Thanks for watching. Bye.